If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bybot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. Time for round two. I'm on the draw with only two lands but two death touch creatures. I'm not mulligan, which my opponent is. So let's see if he keeps six or goes down to five. Yeah, with six cards against my deck here. Uh, if I draw lands with this uh, kind of start, I'm feeling very good about my chances. Uh, as long as there isn't too many flyers coming down for my opponent. I'm also going to run out at least one of the Bay of Lions, maybe even both of them. With Farika's Mander, Keepsake Organ, and Night Hole, all I want is, is creatures trading. Yeah, I think I just I just play another idol on here. Does give my opponent uh, a lot of information about what's going on, and he might also just not not block them, or well, you I guess you can not block them for a while. Fade into antiquity. No, that's unfair. Night holder doesn't even grow from that. The most scary thing, as always, is flyers. Um, oh well, indestructible gods aren't bad either. But whenever you cast a creature spell, you must search for library for a forest of planes card. So this is this is all right, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be super dangerous or anything. I will just continue with my plan of beating down with death touch creatures. And now that I have the keepsake organ, it's actually going to become a bit easier here. Maybe I can actually find something to, to cast Lash of the Whip against. Nothing. Let's see what my opponent is up to. There might be a Divine Verdict waiting for me. Or my opponent kept the Fade into Antiquity, Karametra, God of Harvest, Sand. That's the alternative. Okay, uh, pretty close. So now even even searching for land is not going to help you out. Uh, Reverend Hunter is all right. It's not it's not great, but it's a three three. So does something on this board at least. Erebus emissary. That sounds like a good card. I will I will cast Lash of the Rip here very aggressively uh, for multiple reasons. I can keep attacking with everything. I get a first creature into the board, onto the battle, um, into the graveyard for Night Holer, and I still have the Erebus emissary on whatever I want. Maybe even on the disciple to start attacking with that as well, or to continue attacking with that as well. Let's see. I think my opponent is on a land. Um, I took yeah, I took all his spells, and then he 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 drew and played the siege. Uh, Keepsake Organ doesn't even trade for the band center. I'm missing one land for the Emissary, so... Hmm. Night Holder for plus one plus one seems really weak as well. But I could put it on the Disciple, and then my opponent... Well, then my opponent just blocks the Disciple. That doesn't... doesn't really get me anywhere. Yeah, I think I, I almost have to, like, just cast the Erebus Emissary because I'm lacking the mana and it's it's kind of threatening maybe not lethal but but pretty close to lethal next turn depending on what my opponent decides to do here if he wants to trade the band center for a Bayful Eidolon then it's also it's also great for me the fact that I still have the Freakers Menda means that I can just throw my creatures at what my opponent is doing and probably come out ahead I will just cast that. Mm. 
Yeah, this was a very powerful draw by me and a very weak draw by my opponent. This Karmatra was like, uh, Karmatra didn't really do its job or anything. Karma Lampard is interesting to get through, especially once the the god is active. Necrobite is always good against green, but it's not necessary with the amount of death touch that I have. I'm kind of scared that I might be forced to be the aggressor, depending on how this how this god works out. Although this game it didn't do anything. So having all the removal and death touch creatures is, is definitely the way to go. I'm only wondering if I maybe should put this in just to have a bit more of an evasive um, strategy as well. Maybe I can just not play Blood to Harpy, but my opponent is white, so that might actually be a very good uh, flyers, um, even though I didn't see any. I suppose if I can keep my opponent's board low, then it doesn't really matter if keep, if Karmetra becomes active or not. I will just create a a regenerator or a large blocker, and I have the Knight Holo. So yeah, Cavalampid is just not cutting it. And this looks like another sweet mono black hand. Uh, to be fair, my opponent did mulligan to six, so keeping a, a borderline hand uh, that also failed to failed to develop, so can't really fault my opponent for that, I think. And now he's showing uh, another face here. Let's hope that this return phalanx is enough to dissuade the Oresco Sun Guide from attacking. Could have played Bayful Eidolon, but then my opponent can just attack anyway, play something else. Uh, it's likely that his 3-drop is better than my than my return failings, or at least it's a it's a possibility. Well, this is a crazy draw. My opponent's deck really didn't perform well uh, last game. And now this looks almost unbeatable with Loyal Pegasus and Ring Seed Rider. If, if there's uh, like a targeting effect next, like a hopeful Eidolon on Ringsteed Rider, then I'm just absolutely dead. At least that's not happening from the looks of it. I will attack with the Servant here. I want the... I want the life gain trigger. And this is unlikely to, to result in anything um, disadvan disadvantageous. Running out all the bestow creatures because I have so much stuff to do in the late game. I have the race by wolves maybe on the servant and I have the Erebus Emissary to bestow. Of course having the Bayfly Lon in hand to discard it is, is worth a little bit. But dealing damage and, and just having a good board on when I'm be getting beaten down by flyers is also very valuable. Kermetra, yeah, there we go. Might actually turn active as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, interesting. Grey Merchant of Asphodel. So one, two, three, that, oh, that only deals five right now. That's not really where we want to be going. Let's just deal some damage with Raced by Wolves. I sadly don't have the mana for Erebus Emissary, but this is still a pretty nice play, I think. And I'm willing to... Am I willing to chump block this? Well, I have the wolf, so I can actually... I can be very aggressive here. If my opponent doesn't block, uh, which I think he isn't going to do because of the devotion, then I can still block Karametra with the wolf, even though it shrinks the servant a bit. Yeah, there we go. So now... Now Karametra is active. Yeah, this curve. This curve is... Uh, Absolutely insane. I think my best bet is to try to win with Grey Merchant and recurse it with um, with Farika's Mender and um, win that way. I'm not going to deal a lot more damage here. But I could potentially attack with the Servant next turn, even if I lose a Wolf here. So I'm going to... Wait, let's see. I think I can actually block with the Phalanx. It doesn't doesn't really make a difference if I keep the Defender around or not. And that also gives me the option to, option to just attack with everything next turn. Which I might want to do. 
Keepsake Gorgon. Hmm. So, what do I actually have here? I have the potential to drain my opponent, but only for four, because I, I blocked with a black creature. I could attack with everything. Uh, the Band Sandros eats the wolf, and the Sun Guide blocks a wolf as well. I'm dealing four damage. But if the Sun Guide blocks the wolf, I might actually turn off the, the god. And then I can play Keepsake Gorgon or Grey Merchant. I would probably just play the Grey Merchant because I can get it back. Yeah, I'm gonna play this very aggressively here. I think I'm racing anyway, so I might as well try to win the race. And I kind of want Karametra to attack so that my so that my Grey Merchant dies. I also yeah, I also thought that the Ursko Sangat might not attack because of the because of the devotion. If my opponent doesn't have another creature for the Karametra. And he's kind of forced to, to play it that way, which is what I was hoping. Okay, we haven't won yet, but I will just play the Grey Merchant now. Just pressuring, pressuring my opponent's life total. That's, I think, the, the key to this game. Let's see what happens. I, I can't really, didn't really compute all of this. Uh, I'm gonna be attacked um, pretty clearly, pretty obviously. And I would need two turns to just get the Grey Merchant back and win with that. Um, there's other options as well, because if my opponent is too aggressive with his attack here, then I might just win on the backswing, especially if I draw a land to um, bestow Erebus Emissary to create an additional lethal creature. Uh, this really depends on what my opponent is up to. Uh, like I've said, he might not have another creature in hand. At least his the fact that he didn't block with a Rascal Sun Guide leads me to believe that um, before his draw step, my opponent didn't have a creature. This is intense. Okay, an attack. Wingsteed Rider, Karametra. No loyal Pegasus. Somebody is very scared. But this is the good thing. If my opponent is playing scared, then I will be able to um, burn him out with Furikus Mender. And if my opponent would, would be playing very aggressively, then I would be threatening lethal on the crackback. So um, both of these both of these options look very good for me. Now I don't really think that I'm that I'm losing. The fact that um, the fact that loyal Pegasus stayed back uh, is a very good sign. I could still be losing to a, a God's willing, but other than that, I think uh, the Grey Merchant is going to take it. Did I say God's willing? I meant um, the Sun God. Glimpse the Sun God. If this taps down my team, I'm taking. 15, so I'm, I'm just dead then. Okay, this was to be expected. Let's see, Bayful Eilon um, is a black card. I need to keep, I need to keep at least one black permanent. This is the, the main goal. And I can, I can basically throw away everything else. So the question is, do I ever lose if if I'm taking seven here? In theory, there could be a couple of pump spells on Wingsteed Rider and, and whatnot. So I think blocking with Bayful Eidolon on the on the Ferris Band Centaurs is reasonable. Bayful Eidolon trades with the Centaurs and I still have two black creatures left that are also kind of threatening lethal. The Mender is threatening lethal by itself and with the help of Erebus Emissary, I could even could even uh, generate one more lethal guy. My opponent could also have Savage Surge on a Risk or Sun Guide, going up to five. That would be nice. Yeah, that's actually it. But I think I can beat five life with my board. 
Either way, I'm not unhappy about the block because it made sure that I survived and um, getting rid of the flyer of the of the band centaurs is also was also worth it. So let's see what happens if I just cast this. Now my opponent is going down to one. And I'm just gonna attack with both of my creatures. There isn't much that can happen here. Boon Seder. That's pretty good. Wow, that's one of the best cards my opponent could have. So now this servant dies. And... Wow, 4-2 flash. I think I always have to attack with the servant. I don't really... I don't see not attacking with it um, working out ever. So now my opponent can actually force a chump block. If he, but only if he attacks with everything, which he might not be able to do if he didn't draw a land, uh, if he didn't draw a creature. Wow, what a game! Did I have to play this differently? Did I have to make sure that my devotion was even higher? Did I have to wait a turn with the gray merchant? This didn't look, uh, didn't really look losable. But once again, I'm. One damage short here. Now the problem is if, if I if I wait with the Grey Merchant, then the Boon Seder play is still super strong, either on the Ringsteed Rider or just to activate Karametra or both. Um, I don't think that would have uh, worked out for me. So what's the new plan? Chump block Karametra? or take a bunch of damage and then force my opponents to block. I would go down to 5 here, and then I attack back, force both of my cre opponent's creatures to block, and then Karametra is definitely not active anymore. I will put my opponent on no creature here, so I'm not blocking. I think jump blocking loses me, loses me the game, but um, not blocking might win me the game. That's the theory. So, I can force Boon Seder to block. I, I want to force both creatures to block. And then I'm just playing Keepsake Gorgon to threaten lethal, potentially. It's just too important to um, deactivate Karmatra, which I thought was, uh, was basically done, but then the Boon Seder came down. All right, now Karametra should hopefully not be a problem anymore. And I'm not I'm still dying to a plus 2 plus 2 effect on Wingsuit Rider, which is really unfortunate, but I cannot help it. That savage search was really tricky. Keeping my opponent alive just barely by uh, triggering inspired. Yeah. Bestow or 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 most combat tricks just kill me here. No attack with Wingsuit Rider is a good sign for me, though. And the land is a very good sign. So I will just see what happens when I attack. And I have the Keepsake Gorgon activation as a backup. All right. Whoa, that was, that was sweet. Um, great games, great games.